Thousands of veterans who served in the latest stages of the Falklands War are to be awarded medals for their service. The South Atlantic Medal Without Rosette is being made available to those sent to the conflict zone after hostilities officially ended in 1982. They were put to work on the minefields, clearing the bodies of dead soldiers while under a continuing threat from Argentine aircraft and submarines. Victoria Smith has met two of the men who led the campaign for recognition. These two men saw service in the South Atlantic during the dangerous months following the official end of the war. It's taken them 32 years to be considered worthy of a medal. Their colleagues who fought in the months before them received a South Atlantic medal with rosette, but those sent after faced risk of a different kind. In appalling weather conditions, they dived for dead bodies despite Argentine submarines continuing to operate. Buzzed by Argentine jets, they braved dangerous minefields to collect both British and Argentine bodies, many of which were booby-trapped. Unknown to those celebrating victory at home, these soldiers also repatriated the bodies of their dead colleagues who'd been buried in mass graves during the worst of the conflict. Many lost limbs themselves and 11 Welsh guards were injured during an accident while rebuilding Port Stanley Airfield. But the government said these veterans did not meet the requirements of risk and rigour needed to get a medal. It was a corporate effort. Um, if you were to compare it to Afghanistan or anything now, um, you, could, you, you would understand that nothing just ends in a war, completely ends. There are still major ob objectives to be you know, um, overcome repatriation of the dead, there's also the heavily mined areas and if you understand that the Argentinians indiscriminately mined the whole of the Falklands, they were throwing them out of um, C-130s, uh, they didn't, they didn't um, plan any, any minefields, they didn't put any mapping down, um, they booby trapped their own bodies, uh, there was many um, dead bodies scattered all over the Falklands after the 14th. The risk is, in the, in the rigour, is the, the environment. Uh, the particular job that you're doing at the time, which could cause risk. In our case, it was uh, mines, uh, mines by the Argentinians. There was the air threat, uh, continuing air threat. There was landmines still to contend with. Uh, so that all came under the risk and rigour. Once the war had officially ended on June the 14th, the government moved quickly to strike a medal and hold a victory parade, excluding all those still working out in the South Atlantic. My belief, and, and, and many other people, is that it was rushed uh, too quickly. Uh, when you think on the 14th of June was the de facto cessation of hostilities, and uh, on the 16th of June, Margaret Thatcher said strike the South Atlantic medal. That was a political uh, reason on her part. And I think her intention was to get the medal out as quickly as she could for the uh, victory parade in London in October. My own personal opinion, it was for political gain. If you, if you, if you think back to 1982, the Tory government were not exactly the most popular government within, uh, within the country. They'd all, they were, prior to the 2nd of April, they tried to decimate the armed forces, run them down completely, and that's why the armed forces were in such, such a state of ill repair at that time. And if you go back through history now, and you can see how close run a thing it was. Now both have received their medals in time for Remembrance Day, and they plan to wear them to the Cenotaph with pride. Victoria Smith, Forces News, Yorkshire.